welcome back to another video from the Block IoT. Did you know the product cancellation date for the Siemens ET200S distributed IO system is set to be in October 23? That means in less than two weeks, this product will not be an active product on the industry mall and is only available to purchase as an spare part. In other words, if you go to the Siemens industry mall and pick one of the products from the ET200S family, you will notice this line, which is a product life cycle, will change from PM400 to PM410, which is the type cancellation. And this product, I assume there will be a description over here under the availability, and it will say, if this product is only available as an spare part but don't worry at all that doesn't mean that you will be in top situation where you cannot upgrade your system or your system will be down at all there is absolutely nothing to be worried about because ET200S is being cancelled for a good cause and it will be replaced with a product called ET200SP which I'm pretty sure most of you are already familiar with and this is not a new product, it's been there for a while, uh, for many years actually. So the new ET200SP will do pretty much everything that ET200S could do, in addition to a lot of other things that ET200SP can do as a newer platform. In this video, I'm not going to spend too much time to explain what is ET200SP and what's the difference between ET200SP and S because there are several videos on the Siemens official website to explain that. Instead, I'm going to show you how easy it is to use a tool called TIA Selection Toolbox to migrate your existing ET200S components to their new ET200SP counterparts. Also, I'm going to show you how is the module looks like and feels. Uh, for those of you, you may have not seen them before. Okay, so before jumping into the TI selection toolbox and see how we can migrate our ET200S to the ET200SP, let's see how the ET200SP actually looks like and what are different components in this system and overall get a good feeling about the physical hardware. So an ET200SP distributed IO system consists of First of all, one interface module or an IA module. It has different version uh, based on the features that it offers. And also it has a, another component attached to the IA module it's called bus adapter. Basically the bus adapter gives you the capability to connect to the Profinet, to the Ethernet IP or even Modbus TCP networks. And as you can see here, there is a power adapter apparently that you can connect your 24 volt DC and on the right side you will see these connectors which will connect to the next module and i'm going to show you next so at the heart of the et200 sp uh, distributed io system we have io modules there are different type of io modules in the et200 sp family uh, for example the analog inputs the digital inputs and outputs. Overall, it offers different type of inputs and outputs based on your application needs. So, as you can see, the I.O. module looks like this and apparently you cannot just attach them to the base module. That's why we have something called uh, base module or there are just different names, but you can just call them base module and you can use them to just attach your I.O. card. As you can see, there are two connectors to these base modules, it just snapped together. And this package, which is a module and a base module can be connected to the interface module. Okay, so if that's the only module that you need, you need something called server module, uh, which terminates the, the rack. And that's how you just connect the server module to the last components in your rack. And as you see, you can just connect them to the DIN rail in your panel. But if you need more module, you can just disconnect the server module. You can use another base module and another module. Snap them together. And in the end, attach your servo module. 
you might have noticed there are different type of base modules and here I have both of them and you can recognize them by the color as you see here I have a white base module and a gray one and the difference between them is basically the power distribution overall in a nutshell white module is used to distribute the power in an older ET200S we had something called power modules that does not exist in the ET200 speed and the power distribution is done through the white modules okay now that we know what is ET200 speed and how does it look like let's see how we can convert or migrate or exist in ET200S to the ET200 SP and find a bill of material to purchase from a sale representative Now let's see how easy it is to migrate your ET200S system to the ET200SP system using a TI selection toolbox to find a proper bomb or bill of material. If you haven't worked with the TI selection toolbox, it's a free software offered from Siemens and it's available in both cloud or in your browser or as a local application as I have here. Uh, basically it's a comprehensive catalog and it's way more than just a catalog you can select and configure different devices and as one of the outputs that you can get is bill of material okay so to show you how we can we migrate ET200 S to the ET200 SP we just create a sample rack uh, which consists of some components uh, from the ET200 S family and then we'll migrate that into the ET200 SP. So to get us started we just go to the project section, we add, create a new device and we'll go to the IO system. As you can see here the TI selection toolbox, it has the softwares, controllers, IO system, panels and so on. But for now, we need the IO system and that's ET200S. As you see here, there are many different uh, family of distributed IO system. But for now, we are just going to pick an ET200S system. The first thing you need to do, you just go to the configure. And we'll just pick some random components. For example, we'll pick the interface module or IM 151-3, which has the Profinet capability and it's a high feature. The second and most important module in the ET200S is the power module, which as I explained, uh, it distributes the power to the different modules. Also, let's just add some digital and analog inputs and outputs. Let's just add four standard digital inputs and four standard digital outputs. Let's just add a couple analog cards as well. Maybe let's just add two analog inputs, uh, zero to two any milliamp and maybe just one analog output as well okay again if you haven't worked ti selection toolbox by now you have a bomb created for you right over here with just some clicks you don't need to know every single component you can just select from the menu and then the software automatically adds the necessary or prerequisite components attached to them for example here i have this digital input and as you see here it added my uh, digital input card and also my base module which matches the um, digital input card okay let's just keep it simple this is just an example but definitely your configuration and rack would be different from mine in this example you will most likely have uh, more or less modules based on your application but that's basically what we are going to migrate as I said we have an interface module couple of digital and analog cards and we can go back to our project now and migrate this ET200S to the ET200SP without any previous knowledge about ET200SP okay as you can see here I have my ET200S I have the green check mark here which means there is no error if I was missing a component I would just get an error in this software so the first thing I want to do I just select this gear uh, icon and then I select the migrate so this is basically like a questionnaire or a wizard 
you can answer different questions throughout your migration from ET200S to the ET200SP to make the migration process more accurate. For example, here, I can say, okay, keep the Profibus DP as an interface, or if I don't care, I would just, the software would pick the most efficient one for me, which could be a Profinet instead of Profibus, as nowadays, not many people use Profibus in their plans. So the first thing, I'm just going to select my project, which is ET200S, and then I can go through this menu, and then as I explained, you can just answer some question in this wizard. So the basically software picks the best uh, modules for you. Okay, one of the most important one is the load group in the AT200SP. As I said, the base modules in the AT200SP family can be either white or gray. That means the white passes the power to the next module, but the gray doesn't. So here you can specify how many load group you will have. Normally what I would do, based on the different type of signals or maybe inputs or outputs, I pick the different type of load group. For example, here I had one digital input, one digital output, and one analog input and one analog output. So overall, I want to separate the power for all four groups. That's why I select the four over here. And based on the sensors or devices that are connected to your module, you can select the type of the connection for DI, DQ, and AI and AQ. For example, I just keep it here as is like one wire connection without additional terminal. And the next option is function upgrades. As I explained, you can upgrade um, your base module or you can type of your network. For now, I just want to keep it uh, simple and I just keep no upgrade. But again, there is no rocket science. You can pick if you want to upgrade your module uh, to a more advanced one, you can select them from here. And lastly, as you can see over here, the software TI selection toolbox. Uh, selected the correct ET200 SP modules and components for me based on my existing ET200 S family and all I need to do I hit the apply and it says the migration has been uh, successfully done and there is a log you can go through and now as you can see here I have my migrated ET200 uh, SP rack and I can go to the configure again if I want to change them, if I want to see how does it look like. Again, as I explained, I selected to have four uh, separated load group. That's why I have four white base modules. This could be two or as a minimum, I suggest to go two to separate the analog and digital signals. And on the bottom, as you can see, you have the bill of material and you have the part numbers and this is what you need to give to the Siemens sales representative and they can place an order for you. Okay, that's it for today. I hope this video was somehow useful for you and your application. Please feel free to message me if you have more questions about the migrating ET200S to the ET200SP or just kindly contact your Siemens local representative and they'll be more than happy to help you out. Until the next video, have a great day or night.